Welcome to Light of the Southwest. We have an exciting evening lined up for you today because I have two of my very favorite people in West Texas uh, joining us this evening. We have Jeff Russell to my far right. Hey, Jeff. Hey, good evening. And uh, our mayor, Javier Hoven, is with us this evening. And uh, these two men are gentlemen that I have known for some time now that love our community and serve in our community in a multitude of ways. But I just learned something else about these two guys that uh, was pretty interesting. Uh, Jeff, what? Uh, when did you and Javier first encounter each other? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, way back, way back in eighth grade at Bonham Junior High. Uh, in Spanish class. Yep. I'm still trying to figure out what Javier was doing in Spanish class. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but uh, that's that's where we first met. And so I think yeah. Javier sat behind me or in front, uh, of, or you. Something, yeah, or in front of me, yeah. yeah. And uh, and that was the first time that we met each other. I got I got Jeff through Spanish class, and yep. I still haven't figured out. <laughs> that may be why he yeah. was there, Jeff. Yeah. He, he may be. God, God knew I needed a tutor. I still, I still don't understand how I got a B and he got an A. So <laughs> but you're Jeff, a good tutor, but, maybe. But, huh? but Jeff always remembers. Yeah, we we're playing loteria, you know, Spanish bingo, and I don't recall that, but yeah, it was back what seventy. Every Friday, every Friday, yeah, yeah, every right. Friday, you played bingo. Yeah, huh? nineteen seventy-eight, yeah. and uh, wow, it's wow, just you guys are golly. Young, young men, I might add, that I'm speaking to tonight. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's a blessing to have both of you on the scene. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, as, we, as we talked uh, before we came on, we said, you know, what, what all do we want to look at tonight? Because, you know, there are issues at every level right now. We have major issues at our national level. We have them at our state level. And we have them at our local level, we would say. Things that, that need attention. And so, uh, you know, we're going to kind of dive in right there and, and say, you know, guys, what in the world is going on in our nation? You want to start off with that? <laughs> Jeff, you want to? Well, I, I, let's start on a positive note here. You know, I, I was really encouraged to hear the Supreme Court going to take mm -hmm. this uh, Mississippi abortion case. Yes. Uh, you know, this is, I, I think this may be what we've kind of been waiting for for a long time. Uh, and so uh, to have them take this case to maybe look at Roe v. Wade again. Yes. Uh, first time uh, since, what, 73? Yes, right. Uh, you know, I, I just want to encourage everybody right here to be praying about that case. Amen. Be praying for our Supreme Court justices um, that, that we will uh, begin to strip away at a national level this, this national sin of abortion. Yes. And, uh, you know, I was really encouraged by that. I was a little surprised by it, honestly. But, uh, but I know there's been lots of people over lots of time that have been praying about it, that have been working towards this. Uh, we need to really be in fasting and prayer yes. uh, as, as that heads up to the court next session, uh, because that could be a really watershed moment uh, in, the, in, in the movement to protect the unborn. The unborn. And... and the Supreme Court taking that up also came right in the heel to what happened in Lubbock, Texas, yes. with that uh, historic vote by the community after uh, the city council in Lubbock decided that they were not going, they were going to reject uh, the ordinance uh, right. of uh, protecting life. Yes. And the the community overwhelmingly yes. uh, voted in May 1st. 33 percent. Yeah, 21,000. Like the, 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 the movement that we saw way God moved within that community. You, you were a witness to that, what was going on uh, while you visited the, the churches. You know, the bigger the churches, the bigger the sign. Yeah, yeah, we saw that up there. I know uh, one of our other city council members and uh, Mark Mott and I were up there on a totally unrelated thing uh, the weekend before the end of the vote. Right. And, uh, and it's we're May 1st. May 1st. May 1st. May 1st. And so we're driving along Marsha Shop Freeway to get to yeah. where we need to go. And uh, we just started noticing these churches, large and small. Uh, small churches would have maybe the four by four foot signs out. Big churches had these huge banners hanging off the sides of the building uh, promoting the yes vote yes. Uh, for that. And, and, and we just couldn't help but talk about how encouraging that was uh, to see those churches engaged at that level. 
and even as we drove out into kind of the countryside there towards the old Air Force Base, mm-hmm. uh, you would again just see churches and they'd have these yeah. big signs out there. So and, the church is engaged in that effort, and I believe with all of my heart, the Lord used his people to effectuate his desires. And, and so we're, we're you know, it, it, you, you you start believing that this is going out through not just in our local community and in, in the, in the surrounding areas in Texas, but other other states are being affected, other communities. And we're, we're we're just like any other community throughout this throughout this uh, country. So we're seeing a, a, a movement starting at the local level throughout this nation mm-hmm. of taking control of their communities. And when each community starts doing that and starts getting right with God. You know, things the, the, can change. Things are going to change. Things can change. Things are going to change. You know, I, I can't help but think, uh, I guess it was a year and a half or so ago, uh, I was uh, in one of David Barton's uh, conferences and he was sharing. And, you know, that is what he said, Javier. He said, for our nation to make a 180, it's imperative that the local people take up the issues. Mm-hmm. And that's, that is what we are seeing on many fronts. I understand that, was it today that five counties in Oregon actually voted to secede from the state of Oregon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Positive sign in Oregon. Yeah. 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 That's, that's local engagement right there is what it is. And it's what it's going to happen. Now, you guys were both involved in our recent event uh, in Odessa Sanctuary for Life. And that was an exciting day, I believe. We had a tremendous lineup of speakers that day. And, you know, I I don't remember when I have been more blessed uh, by seeing more individuals speak that spoke truth in boldness. But we heard a lot of truth uh, out there at Memorial Park that day, didn't we, guys? We, we did, and it came from a wide, uh, a widely diverse group of speakers. It really did. Uh, we had some pastors. We had some uh, community leaders. Uh, had two mayors. Uh, yeah, had two mayors. two mayors. Had the mayor uh, of Whiteface, the mayor of Big Springs. Yeah, we had we had our Odessa mayor. Our Odessa we had two mayor. Of our, we had three mayors. Right? Yeah, three we mayors. had two city council members from Odessa. Uh, that were there, Mark Mata and Denise Swanner, uh-huh. uh, that spoke. And, and, and the thing that struck me about a lot of the uh, speeches, even like Mark and Denise, it was very personal. They began to relate very personal stories yes. uh, of how their life had been changed and blessed uh, by carrying on into a pregnancy that, that maybe a lot of people told them, hey, you don't, you know, maybe, maybe that's not the best deal for you. You know, and that that brings up another thing, and I hope I don't go too aside here, but, you know, one of the things back to this local engagement and involvement that we are seeing mm-hmm. across the country right now, one of the things that I'm encouraged by is the transparency of those individuals that are leading those efforts. I believe that there is a counter to all of the covert activities that have been conducted at all of these levels for an extended period of time. I believe that that there is a growing concern from the populace at large that, hey, we have been duped. We have been misled. We have not been given the facts. And so I see, and I commend you right now, Javier, in our own community, for leading in an effort of transparency since you've taken office. I think it's imperative. Uh, the, the, the message in the, in, 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 the, uh, in the election was apparent that that's what the community was voting for. They wanted to see the thought process. The, what, what you were hearing, members of our local uh, taxi entities, what they said did not correlate with their Line action. Up. It not, none of it lined up. And then when you multiply that from the local and take it to the state and the federal, it really manifested that, hey, you know, what what we're hearing, what we're seeing are two different things. And what constantly I heard as feedback after the election in these months that we've now been serving as mayor is they were, they were, that's what they voted for. We heard a different message. We heard, and it was delivered in a different way, and it spoke to us. And I truly believe that uh, God ordained that. 
that 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 uh, that direction and started opening up eyes. And and I think that we're seeing that movement throughout this country. And you're seeing people that were engaged had never been engaged before when we saw the the election uh, that Tuesday in November, which is being called the uh, the. the the big lie, the great lie, mm -hmm. that was this, this election process. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're seeing that even a younger generation mm -hmm. that is basically is not tolerant of that type of uh, behavior. behavior and, and, and they're really moving. And we're seeing a lot of that in the local. I'm seeing a lot of young people really engaged, Engaging. paying attention, understanding the issues. For them, it's not politics. For them, it's they want transparency and they can handle the transparency. They want to have everything on the table. They want to know everything that's going on, and they'll make a, a very educated uh, a guess of what they believe the community should be going. The average age is dropping both in this entire area, and so basically what we need to do is we need to start developing that leadership because they're, they're, they're coming along a lot faster. They understand what's going on in our community, and they want that change. They want that transparency, and they are taking over the reins. I get to meet with a lot. I met with a, a a, a restaurant full of young graduates that were out of Crane, and the things that they expressed of what they wanted to see in their community in Crane was very encouraging. I'm very encouraged wow. by these uh, seniors. Uh, they all engaged, they all asked questions, and it was impromptu. I just happened to be in this restaurant. A gentleman got up, introduced himself, and said, if you had one question, if, there was, if the mayor happened to be here, what would that be? Huh. And so they all turned around, started going into a conversation, and then he turned and looked at me and I walked up. I said, well, I'm the mayor of the city of Odessa. And we got into a 15 minute conversation. It was That's very exactly. encouraging. A norm to, a prompt to that happened, yeah. a great discussion. And uh, you know, I think that we both got a lot of it. I know I learned a lot and uh, very encouraged by the youth there in, in Crane, Texas. That's exciting. That's exciting. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, make a quick run over here. You know, guys, uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of exciting things happening over at God's Learning Channel. And we need partners. We need partners. And so I just want to take this opportunity to invite you to become a partner over at GLC. You know, GLC has reached multitudes of people for multitudes of years. Uh, I have shared our personal story about the amazing role that they played for Mission Messiah. At the very outset, some of our longest standing uh, partners of Mission Messiah are partners of, of God's Learning Channel. And so the message that God wants out needs partners. And if we, we are living in an hour when censorship, when fake news and fake media are not telling the truth. They are acting in covert methodology. And so this is an opportunity to keep a voice alive. So we just want to encourage you tonight. You know, information is on the bottom of the screen as to how you uh, participate with GLC. But please, would you prayerfully consider becoming a GLC partner, and the Lord will bless you richly. So, you know, we were talking earlier, uh, Jeff, as well, you were talking about Alan West's letter today that came out. And I think, you know, it's exciting to see these positive things happening in local communities and transparency being pushed to the forefront by, by elected individuals like Javier, but we still see at our state level, Jeff, a Republican Party controlling the House, the Senate, the executive branch, and we can't get anything passed up there that aligns itself with the Republican Party platform and how conservatives and conservative believers stand. What is wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I think what we have is uh, a lot of politicians, elected officials, uh, they come home, they come back to their districts, 
Um, they know what their districts want them to say. And so they tell us what we want to hear. Uh, and then they get back down to Austin where the work's being done during, during our legislative sessions. Uh, and then it all becomes about who's lining their campaign coffers. Hmm. Uh, Let's say that one more time. It becomes <laughs> about who is lining the campaign coffers, yeah. who is lining the pockets of those elected individuals. Yep. In essence. And, and they become, and, 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 and the one thing that I've noticed about most elected officials uh, is that the longer they're in office, the more polished they become, the more uh, chameleon-like they become, mm -hmm. so that they can change and, and fit whatever group they're whatever. in at the moment. Yeah. And, and so they, be, they become that person. Um, you know, we went into a, a, a really incredible, uh, arduous convention this year because we tried to do it all virtual. It was a disaster right. uh, after Houston wouldn't let us meet uh, live and in person. But, uh, but we go through all that. And, you know, and part of that process is the convention as a whole, which these are, these, these are delegates selected to the convention from every county in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, they decide on what we call legislative priorities, and there's usually eight of them. Um, and these are, the, these are the eight key issues um, that we're asking our state representatives, our state legislature, to act to on and, and, report, and a, yeah. yeah to carry that flag. Yep. And uh, you know, two years ago, um, we we had we had we those. Had it all. Uh, we had we had all the houses. We had the governorship and the lieutenant governor. Uh, we had all that. Uh, we rolled into convention thinking, hot dog, we're going to get something done, and. The air went out of our tires, and we got almost nothing done. Nothing accomplished, and even uh, to the budget. And and we're we're coming. Down we're coming the right to the end of it this time. Session yep. with and, a similar uh, story. Yep. Yep. And, and we're getting almost nothing done. You know, it looks like uh, it looks like the 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 things we're going to get done are a very watered down constitutional carry. Uh, Bill, we're still waiting on the details on that. We've hit, hit some compromise, but nobody, but nobody <laughs> seems to know what the compromise is. What the compromise is, is. so that yeah. always makes me a little nervous. nervous. Uh, you know, the one positive thing I will say is it looks like uh, we're going to get the heartbeat bill. Yep. You got the heartbeat act, uh, yeah. yep. and so as soon as the governor gets that uh, signed. signed and 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 out, and uh, so that's going to be a very positive thing. That's that's probably the strongest thing that we've seen. And, uh, and that's a great deal. But we had a number of other things, everything from, from school choice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were talking about that before, uh, before we came on air. You know, the, the reality of it is that about 50 years ago, the liberals uh, figured out, hey, if we can control the educational system, that's right. we'll control we can the control the nation. nation. Yep. And, and they very artfully and skillfully have done that. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was about six or eight years ago. I don't remember exactly when, but on a uh, on a Texas constitutional amendment uh, election cycle, which we'll be having one of those again in November. Uh, you know, the the question was put for the referendum question uh, about school choice, and I don't remember the exact number, but it was up in the high 80s uh, of Republican voters yep. that said they would like to have complete school freedom. Uh, educational freedom through the form of vouchers. Mm -hmm. So where we tie the money to the students. Uh, you would think when, you know, close to 90% of the Republicans vote and send that mandate to Austin, uh, we would have got something done. Mm -hmm. We're still, still, we're still, still waiting. waiting. Still we're waiting. still waiting. <laughs> yeah, uh, these like many years running. later. Yeah. It was a legislative party and it has been every session since then. Mm -hmm. uh, we got nowhere with it. Uh, this year, uh, because the liberals understand that if we can crack that away from them and we can begin to take control of educating our students, uh, then we can begin to regain our country. Uh, you know, we ought to be able to spend our tax dollars to send them to private schools, parochial schools, uh, home schools, whatever. That ought to be the parents' right to choose how, how, how they want to educate their student and have the funding there available to do that. Well, they they should, and, and, and like you say, that has in fact been the undermining of our nation, has been our educational system. 
but you can you can look at the travesties since we took prayer out of schools. You know, That's right. that was a huge. You can look at all of the statistics of. You know, in the late 50s, the issues in schoolrooms, classrooms were, were gum under the desk, <laughs> I've, yeah. I've read. Yeah. And, and today, it's guns, you know, yeah. it's, it's issues of that nature. But when, when you do not want God in the midst of whatever it is that you are doing, you have nothing but a train wreck to expect. And that's what we allowed in this country as we said, God, you're really not wanted in this place. Yeah, and we're seeing we're seeing all the impact of that. My my wife is a uh, elementary school principal here in Odessa, mm -hmm. uh, in Ector County, and uh, you you know the, where we're at right now with our education, with our public education, is our teachers have very little time to teach mm -hmm. because they're being. They're handling huge discipline problems. Everything from kids throwing desks at teachers and and threatening and, and all these things. Uh, they're having to be social workers because our families are, are just adrift. Yep. Uh, and so they're handling all the social emotional problems uh, that are coming into the classroom. Uh, we have an incredibly entrenched bureaucracy uh, that, uh, you know, it, it loves paperwork. I don't know any other way to say it, but they, but you know, we report on everything, but it accomplishes nothing. Uh, we have all these issues going, and so, and then we look around and we think, okay, why are we falling so far behind the rest of the world? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had I had an occasion a couple of years ago to travel to India, okay. uh, to Bangalore, uh, which is their big tech center, but uh, you know, I was amazed as we were just kind of going around town and all and and the Indian students are uh, when you look at the uh, test results and all they're far head and shoulders above uh, the average American student and yet they are being educated with little chalkboards <laughs> and things but what they have is they have strong discipline in the classroom mm -hmm. um, teachers are not having to deal with all these social emotional Innovation. societal problems uh, they they value value that education, and and as a result, they're graduating uh, incredible mathematicians and scientists and and, and every other discipline. Uh, but it just goes down to the value that they place on that, and they're doing it with a fraction of the budget that we have uh, here. Yeah, you know I can't help but believe we have had a very intentional dumbing down oh, yeah. of our student yeah. population. Uh, as I look, you know, uh, as applications come across my desk for, for job opportunities, I, in all honesty, stand astounded at the inability to spell, to write complete sentences, uh, to express oneself, in all honesty. And it just, it, it it's unnerving. Uh, uh it, it is the norm in the technology that we have is uh, spell check, texting, memes. Right. Uh, I still like the word, but I've had youth that have taken abbreviations and it took me, I, I, <laughs> 10 I minutes to figure, yeah, out to figure out what the abbreviation, <laughs> what the emoji yeah. is, but that's the new language. <clears throat> and and the, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, uh, try to get a, a just a general labor. Mm -hmm. It's virtually impossible. That, mm -hmm. And the stipulations of being able to background check and a drug test and things of nature, you're going to get one of three or two of three, but you never get three of three, and it's very, very difficult. And in, and just finding general help, it's been very difficult. Now you go into skilled labor or even trades, doesn't exist. Uh, you know, me having a roofing company and doing construction, it's been very difficult for me to find uh skilled trades that are competent that you have to sit there and hold their hands constantly and because the quality of the work is is uh subpar mm -hmm. and and let me tell you and that's being generous using the, the that word that, and and you can't be there all the time and mm -hmm. so it, it becomes very difficult and it costs money uh and the prices go up and uh people constantly complaining that we feel like we're price gouging them and which we're not we're the, but the thing is is that uh it, it, it is it, it costs more to be on on site and things of that nature so yeah, we, we definitely uh, 
the route that we've taken in education. There was a time and period when you know when we went to school that there was also a an equal uh, a, there was a balanced approach to going to school and probably going to college in a white collar uh, job and also also the trades and so there, and and then we just moved there. Everybody's going to go to Harvard. Well, then we know that's not true. And the thing is that now we've, leave, we've left this huge gap in the trades that we now have to get back to. And that's one of the things when I go speak in schools, they ask, what can we do as a community to start teaching trades again? Mm. Uh, can we not get into a situation where we start encouraging our youth to look into being a police officer? Nobody wants to be a police officer in this community, in, in any of our communities again. And who, who you know, uh, would you blame them? And so we have to get back to a fundamental approach of what we are going to prioritize. And we need to prioritize God, we need to prioritize families, and we need to prioritize values and discipline. Well, we do. You know, I, I, I quote it often, but the word is so clear and we have, we have diverted from it. But except God build the city, they that labor, labor, labor in vain. vain. It's, it's not going to happen. And so, in essence, as long as we leave God removed from these various arenas, we will do nothing but chase our tail is the, bottom, is the reality. So, you know, what do, what do we do about that? I mean, is that what we're seeing with this local impetus that we're talking about? People that have a genuine, genuine moral uh, conscience and desire for for what is right, stepping up is that? I I think so. And if you go out in the community and really, uh, it, and it's out there, it's not hidden. It's in plain sight. And I can use some very really good examples. Uh, gentleman within my uh, own church and small group mm -hmm. uh, opened up a little gym. Uh, basically, just uh, walked away from uh, his life, his his, his livelihood. And, and had a calling about going out there and creating this boxing gym. And first day they signed up, 70 kids showed up. Wow. 70 kids. That's impressive. And, and, and in most cases, he didn't go into it making money. He went into it because he has two sons that are in boxing, one's going professional, and he opened up a place for them to be able to train, and he trains them. And, and then uh, they opened it up, uh, wife set up a little desk, and... Uh, and so they said, we're not going to get any kids, 70 kids. And what has happened with these kids is that there is a, a, a there is no father figure. There is no a nuclear family. Right. They, they, the kids, uh, the youth crave that structure. They want that attention. Mm -hmm. They want that discipline. And so I've had opportunity to go several times. Uh, and, and so it's a, right there in Odessa, uh, just uh, west wow. of a royalty, uh, south of the, of the, of uh, 8th Street, 7th Street. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, these there, there, there's adults, there's, there's uh, adolescents, uh, mm -hmm. teen, uh, junior high kids. It's mm -hmm. just amazing to see uh, because the reason is that they, 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 they hear the Word of God. Mm -hmm. They're organized in the community, doing cleanups, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. and, and they really love being there. They're, they're, what they're receiving uh, more than just training, they're being trained to once again follow within the confines of what God intended for our community to be, and that Amen. is structured, discipline, and in His Word. And, and that's happening, and it's happening in several areas through the community. I've had an opportunity as mayor to be able to visit many individuals, many places, many uh, community, uh, uh, basically organizations, well, not even organizations, just individuals just mm -hmm. doing it without going out there creating a 501c3 or putting mm -hmm. a board together, mm -hmm. hearing a calling, and, and then just out. stepping up and getting it done, yeah. and and then all of a sudden uh, people respond because this is what they're they're, they're seeking, yeah. they're wanting to do. Wow! And so it's been amazing. So the thing is, is that people are starved for the word, but people are starved for discipline. And 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 so the thing is, is that we put a lot of onus on the on these children, saying, hey, you, you know, they're unstructured, they're undisciplined. Right. And for the reason, I I don't really believe that. I mean, me, you, you're always going to have one or two things of that nature. Sure. And it was it was true in in my day, but you know, for the most part, uh, you know, the, the, these kids, these youths, uh, we, we have a lot of broken homes well, and they're seeking, exactly. they're seeking help. Well, and that's what, you know, Jeff, you and I have seen that at the mission for years. The, the fatherless situation just engenders so many issues because 
all that any of us are looking for is love. <laughs> and it is amazing, but what you're talking about in some of these efforts and endeavors is people are stepping up to love somebody. Yes. They're stepping up to give of themselves. Is that, that's what I'm hearing? Yes, yes, most definitely. Yeah. You, know, you know, once again, putting the Mayor's Drug and Crime Commission that has been uh, just dormant for the last couple of years, uh, June okay, 3rd. Which, say that again. This is this is the Mayor's Drug and Crime Commission. Okay. It was basically put together uh, and called for by a grand jury back in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And there's an ordinance within the city of Odessa that this uh, Mayor's Drug and Crime Commission exists. And there are key stakeholders that have to be involved due uh, to the ordinance and the uh, and the grand jury. Uh, and so basically it was ordered to, to look into uh, crimes, drugs, things of that nature. And so as of June 3rd, we'll be having our first meeting. It's awesome. something I've been working on since being elected. Uh, and so we'll be moving into and, and we'll be dealing with uh, uh, sexual assault uh, uh, and basically just uh, uh, abandonment issues, family issues. Basically in, in the end, what we want to address mm -hmm. is the broken family and how do we create a healthy family. We have mm -hmm. 17 agencies that basically react it, 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 I use this, this scenario of a river and all these kids are just floating down the river and we have kids and women and men and families. Mm -hmm. 17 agencies are responding by constantly jumping in and pulling them up and, and, and helping them in safety, but they're reacting to the problem. We have to get to the point where what is causing the problem and, and how we fix that is by creating healthy families. How do we do that? Well, the agencies know they have the answers, they have the plan. They just have not had a platform to be able to execute that. Well, now they do. And so uh, we are refocusing the Mayor's Drug and Crime Commission to deal with that, and then we'll be dealing with the game rooms and to deal in how we approach that, not from a reactive, but from a proactive of what we have in our toolbox within the legal community to how do we address what the state is uh, mandating for local communities and permitting things of that nature. Uh, but also, we'll also go into uh, another, uh, what's fragmented in our community, and it is the Mayor's uh, uh, wellness council. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've seen through this pandemic is that we have a, a health issue uh, okay. throughout this country. Uh, we have high diabetes, we have high uh, congestive heart disease and things of that nature. And one of the things that really contributed to a lot of deaths during the pandemic. And so uh, we have to start addressing that. We have to start addressing those issues within our communities to be able to address uh, a preventative health care. And you have you have just established or you're in the process of establishing a new committee or group to effectuate for, that. For, for, the, for the wellness, it is be a new committee that's being put together. I just met with Texas Tech. Uh, we've gotten the blueprint out. Uh, the invitations are going out. And so within the next uh, probably uh, late June and July, we'll be having our first meeting. And then we'll formulate a community plan of how we're going to start addressing uh, health issues throughout this committee that will also can meet mental, mental health issues. One of the things about being isolated within this past year's create, we feel that... Uh, you know, and you see it throughout the community. Uh, I've said it many times, and, and, and there's no disrespect to anybody, but when someone's walking out in the middle field to have a mask on, is that a health issue, is that a health concern, or is that a crutch? And so, uh, you know, I, th I don't think any, uh, uh, as meeting with a lot of health officials, they've all agreed that there has been uh, a setback in, 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 in that mental health needs to be addressed. Is this one of the avenues? We'll, we'll see, but definitely is that we do have to address uh, in this local committee. And so we're gonna put this committee together. It's gonna be led by Texas Tech. We're gonna bring in UTBB, OC, uh, ECISD, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so the thing is, is I, I'm very excited about this. This, awesome. is something, this is something that I've wanted awesome. to be able to address for the reason is that uh, I was diagnosed as a diabetic and uh, through, through hard work, I was able to overcome it and regulate my, my blood sugar. Right. Same uh, day when I was able to do that, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I'm in the battle of prostate cancer. But the thing is, is that I was determined to be able to take control of my health. Amen. And because of that, you know, I think that, that many people out there in the community need to. We have the uh, tools. We have the facilities. The thing is, is it's a well-kept secret. We don't, we don't realize that we have one of the leading places to be able to address preventative care when it comes to diabetes and heart disease. The thing is, we're not utilizing that. Mm. We're behind. And so Texas Tech has approached me to be able to put this community together, and we're going to go forward to it. So there are many things that are going on with this community. and uh, Very positive. Very positive. Jeff, what, what are you seeing in the church? I mean, we're, we're kind of opening up the box here of issues, but, but what do you see the church doing today? Uh, not enough. Okay. Not enough. 
uh, you know, I was just sitting here thinking as Javier was talking about all those things and, and kind of where we started with Sanctuary City and, and, and all these things. You know, the, the reality of it is uh, that if we want to change our community, uh, the churches are going to have to stand up and be counted. Um, you know, we've kind of gotten a little apathetic in, in, in our local church communities. Uh, we're kind of doing our own thing. A lot of times we're not looking outside the four walls of our congregation too much. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of community issues. And, you, and if you want to talk about the biggest one, the family, uh, there is no organization better equipped uh, to deal with broken struggling, dysfunctional families uh, than the local churches. But you know what? The reality of it is those broken people are not going to probably come into the door of our churches. Uh, so that tells me that what we have to do is we have to be going outside the walls of our church. We have to be going out into our community. We have to be actively seeking and finding these uh, people that desperately need help uh, and showing them that, hey, we have some answers. Uh, we do that through love. We do that through care and concern. Uh, we do that through building programs around. You know, the reality of it is when, when, when Javier and I were in eighth grade back in Miss Ontiveros' Spanish class, uh, I can remember uh, the year prior to that, seventh grade, uh, I can remember there was a girl in my class, I don't remember her name, but but, you know, the, the teacher kind of took us aside and said, look, you know, you guys be really, you know, kind because her parents are getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was and it was this big it was this big thing. Uh, well, and that, you know, Jeff, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to kind of dig and, and probe a little bit right here because, you know, there should be a concern with us that divorce rights within the church are very similar to roughly the same. The roughly, roughly the, the same. same. Wow. So <clears throat> let's dig a little deeper. What needs to happen within the church for that correction? Because a lot of people say, "Well, it's it's happening in the church." Well, you know, I think I think we've got to refocus our 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 doctrine, our our teaching, our philosophy. Uh, you know, the reality of it is that in in, in, a, in a in a church today. We're going to have to be dealing with a lot of broken homes. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, that's where we, that's where people are at. That's where we have to meet them. Uh, but what I tell a lot of people a lot of times, you know, you may have gone through a divorce. You may have been divorced several times. I, I don't know. You may have never been married and had children out of way. All of these things are happening. We're not going to put you down for that. That's not our that's not our job. What our job is, and one of the primary jobs is we want to make sure that that doesn't move on to the next generation. generation, generation we want to break generation. that generational that cycle. Right cycle. Yeah. Uh, so so let's, let's meet people where they're at, but let's start dealing with them so that their kids, their grandkids are not going to go through maybe some of the same issues and, and, and things that, that they've gone through. Do we think, is there the possibility that that many things that we have seen happening that we're talking about in our governmental arena and, you know, misdirection and, you know, uh, well, I, I wish I could call up the word right here, but uh, again, things, things covert, not dr right. Are we seeing that in the church? Have we seen, have we seen a breakdown in the church where the emphasis is not where you're placing it right here, but rather on our, our membership roles or the money that's coming yes, into, yeah. the, yes, into the yes. coffers and how we tickle those ears. I just have a great concern that, that we've come to that place in the Word where there is such a teaching of grace unto lasciviousness. And then I look at why that grace message would have to be taught to such an extent but is it perhaps for that end run? Yeah. To well, well, let's let's tie two things that we see going on in our right now. You know, we had this whole movement during the pandemic of enhanced unemployment benefits. So we're going to pay people a lot of money not to work. Yeah, yeah. 
and now we're seeing the ramifications now, and the effect of that. Where do we that. find that in God's Word, by the way? Well, we're on that subject. Yeah, read Proverbs. <laughs> Anywhere in Proverbs, you'll just about find it. Uh, you know, uh, a little slumber, a little sleep, a little folding of the hands. Poverty will overcome you <laughs> like an armed bandit. There you go. So, so we're kind of seeing those things happen. And so what we've done is we've trained people, and now we're having as an employer I'm having trouble getting, getting people, people hired back to the because they're saying, you know, I'm yeah. making more money not working than I am yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you think about that whole philosophy. Mm -hmm. Let's let's translate that to the church. Uh, let's come into the walls of the church where you can come in and not hear the message of anything's wrong. Exactly. Uh, we're kind of building up that same mentality of you That's can a grace and yeah. lasciviousness, you can, isn't it? Yeah, you, you do can, whatever you, you can want. earn a living without working. On the yeah. one hand, in the natural mm -hmm. world, you can earn heaven mm -hmm. without working mm -hmm. in the spiritual world. Yeah. And that's a lot of what we've done in our in our churches over the last 20, 30 years. And, and not that we are talking a works doctrine, but the word is very clear. Faith without works is dead, being alone. And it and it takes effort. Because Just, yeah. that, that yeah. depicts our lives depict our faith Amen. or not is the reality that we're dealing with here. And, and I will tell you one of the things that, you know, that concerns me from, from the mayor's standpoint, and, and I want to circle back to Sanctuary City for, mm -hmm. uh, of Odessa because I received many, many letters. I received a letter over the weekend uh, basically saying that my role and ignoring that uh, abortion don't exist in Odessa. Well, that's that's the whole point of the ordinance, is to maintain a standard that does not, that, that abortions are not being done here. And, and, and we have that right. Uh, there's a movement, uh, there, well, there's a movement by one individual uh, with a men, when I sit in council that would like to see, not bear his cross, but be able to go out there and say, hey, I want the community to do it, which within their right. But I think also that there's a thought process here that they feel that the, 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 the churches, the pastors, the congregations are empathetic right now. They're, their apathy is at, at an all-time high. high. That they, will they put the work in? If the council were to put that on the ballot, would they put the work in okay. to be able to make this a reality? Mm -hmm. And I've, I've said it, you know, since in, during the campaign and, and after we served this, and, and this is the thing is, I've sp spoken to many uh, pastors and ministers, and they can attest that we have had one-on-ones, and I've been visiting as many churches as I can on uh, Saturdays and Sundays, is that you have to take the Word of God out of the brick and mortar. Gotcha. Where where that uh, uh, that church is for you outside of that brick and mortar is for God to determine, and you must be able to reconcile that with God. I don't know, but the thing is, is that the church is out there, they're 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 hungry for the word. The thing is, is that I, I think in, in in the political world, the secular world, uh, I think that politi the the politicians, the bureaucrats don't believe that the uh, churches are up for the fight. Well, and that I want to come back to that. I want to take a quick break right here. You know, we just want to encourage you again, become a part of Onward and Upward. That's kind of what GLC has, has named this, this current uh, partnering uh, arena, if you will, but Onward and Upward. Because again, if the things are going to be accomplished out at GLC for God's purposes, it's imperative that we lock shields, that we all become a part of this effort. And you know, the, the Word of God is very clear. The body of Christ is made of many members, fitly joined together by that which every joint and ligament supplies, even under the edifying of itself in love. You know, every single one of us have a purpose designed by God. Even while we're in our mother's wombs, that purpose, that plan for our lives are established by God. And any one of us is as important as the next when it comes to work in the body. Would you pray about what your work is in the body and be a part of what God is doing? The Lord bless you. You know, as we come back here and we pick back up on, on church, 
and churches, and you just made the comment, Javier, that there's some people that wonder if the churches will step up right now. Now, Jeff, you have alluded to the different sizes of banners that churches were willing to put up outside their churches over in Lubbock. Now, we have a prime, recent, current example of churches engaging Mm. for life in Lubbock, Texas. Mm. And so now we're asking, is Odessa, are Odessa churches up to that which must be done to accomplish? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You know, I think think one of the tricks that the enemy has played inside the church is to say uh, to, to, to pastors, hey, you have to separate politics from the pulpit. Uh, and and so we've kind of bought into that that idea, that lie, uh, that that lie. Yeah. Uh, you know, the reality of it is, you can't separate the two uh, because one has a huge impact on the other, uh, and and back and forth. And so, you know, really, what we've got to have uh, is pastors that are willing to get behind the pulpit, okay, and they're willing to proclaim truth, uh, and they're willing to promote causes that promote godly attributes in our in our community Moral character uh, you know it's not just the abortion it's uh, not uh, issue we have it's a big uh, issue it's huge you know uh, someone made the comment because we had a little bit of back and forth as we were planning uh, our, our sanctuary for life event mm-hmm. we, we even had some conversation about what do we call this thing what do we call right. this movement what do we call what we're trying to do and uh, but we settled on you know make Odessa a sanctuary for life. Yes. And I don't think we really thought about it too much at the time. We were kind of focused on the abortion issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as we were doing the wrap up for that event, someone made the statement. You know, said I, I really think that was kind of a God thing that we ended up with that name because right. when you say a sanctuary for life, it encompasses Amen. more yes. than just the abortion yes. issue. Yes. Uh, and so you know. We know, uh, and, and uh, one of our school board members, uh, uh, Chris Stanley, has apparently done a lot of work on it. We're going to be reaching out to him. But, but uh, you know, Odessa is a major hub for human trafficking. Yes. Uh, we've got to address that. Uh, that robs people's lives yes. just, just as yes. much as abortion, abortion. does. Yes. Uh, we we have uh, and, and 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 we've started conversations here. You know, we have game rooms on every corner. It seems like uh, those are addictive. Those are those are destroying people's lives, families. Their, their, their families, uh, oh, their yes. families' income. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, huge alcoholism problems in 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 the Permian Basin. Mm-hmm. So we've got just this whole variety of issues that are all kind of intertwined. Uh, they're literally robbing people's lives away, and until we decide we're going to start ticking these things off, and we're going to start taking a spiritual hatchet to them, and, and cutting off some of these uh, dead wood limbs that need to be trimmed off for our community, uh, we're not going to we're not going to get to where we need to be for our community. You're exactly right, and you know when we come back and, and we we talk about the churches again, and and will they rise up? You know, I think. I think again, if we'll just go to God's word and we'll we'll see what he says about it. And we know that concerning abortion and this issue that, you know, hands that shed innocent blood are an abomination Amen. to the Lord God mm-hmm. Almighty. Every pastor, every preacher minister overseeing a congregation n- needs to have that clearly stated to all individuals that are a part of that. I think another thing that needs to be spoken there is that we as professing believers must understand that when we do not speak truth to an individual, when we see obvious sin going on, then what God's word tells us over in the book of Ezekiel is that the blood of those individuals is actually upon our hands. And so we as believers, again, leaders in the churches need to understand even those two simple truths that we find in God's word, an abomination and and the blood on whose hand. Because if we will understand these biblical truths, then we will rise up and we will be who it is that God's called us to be. Amen. Amen. Is that... 
You know, and every church has got to figure out where they're, where they fit in that. Um, you know, I know there are some churches in our community that are, are becoming increasingly engaged in the in the foster care. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, Reaching and that's a, and, and that's a, and that's a huge thing. And so, I, I I don't think every church can do everything. Right. But every church has got to be doing something. They've got to figure out what their calling, what their passion is for their church and for their church congregation, and then they've got to get busy in doing it. Amen. Uh, and so Excellent. if we can do that, if we get, I, I don't remember, I, I think there's something in the neighborhood of 120 churches uh, in Ector County, I think, in this area, uh, because I know we work on that list every once in a while. Right. Uh, but, you know, if every one of those churches would really get engaged, Amen. find their niche Amen. in the kingdom, get to working hard on that niche, meeting that need, you know, because part of the part of the uh, deal with the sanctuary city for the unborn, too, is, you know, while we do that, on one hand, we've also got to provide the support that we that we need for women that may find themselves in an unplanned pregnancy. Absolutely. Uh, we don't want to castigate them or or, or, <laughs> or or drive them away. We want to reach out to them. That's no sanctuary. That's if, no if sanctuary. If anyone is castigated, it's not a sanctuary. Yeah. And I loved that. I think it came across well from speakers that day, but the, the, the heart and the love, and, and we know this again, Jeff, working with women at, at the mission all these years is we see the effects of those abortions. We see the devastation. We see it. We've seen the condemnation that an individual has walked under and even weighted them to a, another depth of enslavement, uh, drugs or alcoholism or whatever. And so what we're talking about when we talk about sanctuary for life here, we're talking about loving those individuals into a Absolutely. Absolutely. We're talking about sparing others from getting there, but reaching out to those that have fallen into the, the travesty, to the lies that have been perpetrated, and, and rescuing those individuals in a sanctuary for life. Yeah. And isn't that the line that's uh, always put out there in the floor? Oh, yeah. the, the, the language is, well, you're only, uh, you're only concerned about preventing the, the aborn. Yeah. And, and the abortion, and then once you achieve that, you move on to the next, and then everyone's cast aside. And then, uh, you, and you hear this from social service, then we have to deal with them at a later point. Uh, and it goes back to uh, organizations and the churches to find, like Jeff said, that niche. Yes. Uh, and not, not, every, not every church, not every congregation is going to be in the forefront of the battle. Uh, maybe the, their, their role isn't to go out there and get the signature. Mm -hmm. Maybe their role isn't go out there and, and uh, be... Uh, bringing information, awareness, things of that nature. I think there, there's been a word that's been used constantly, you know, you're, everybody's speaking up, but now it's time to show up. And you've got to decide what that, what, what that show up me, it means for your congregation, your church, and your individual, and your organization. And I think there is plenty to of do. room to, for everyone <laughs> to do a little bit in, in, in the arena that they'll find themselves. But the thing is, is that you're not going to be able to find that niche unless you show up. Amen. And and that's what, and we're at that's that good. point that you know it's time to show up. Amen. We, we're hearing you. You're you're speaking up now. It's time to show up, and that's the uh, where we're going to be going forth. Been working with the uh, Texas uh, Pastoral Alliance, uh, Pastor Dave Welch out of Houston. We mm -hmm. put together some Zoom meetings. Now we're putting together a, a uh, uh, an effort of uh, having churches a. a, a an avenue to be able to hear their words and their congregations to be heard throughout the community. Mm -hmm. And so you'll start seeing a little more movement on that and uh, all that's mm -hmm. being formulated. And uh, we've had some uh, first meeting, there was quite a bit of uh, uh, many pastors showing up mm -hmm. and they're all praying about it. Now there's gonna be some churches that are, their role is gonna be praying and softening hearts and that's going on right now Amen. We're and we're seeing those efforts but there are also going to others that are going to be saying we we you know i'm a general and we've got we've got full soldiers where do you want us Amen. and so uh i really think that god's moving in that direction and where he's going to be leading this community only he knows mm -hmm. but i know i will tell you one thing is that that branch show is being it, it, it's being rattled and we're at and i think that's going to be the call it's time to show up, and then you'll start hearing "show up" and "show up." And, I uh, like that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll I'm very it. encouraged about it, and uh, and so, it, well, as, as many times I hear from 
from the enemy and talking about how wrong we are as a community that we have more important issues. I don't disagree that we have uh, many pressing issues, mm -hmm. but to cast this aside as, you know, there's a, there's a law of the land, there's not really an issue. When you basically say that life is an afterthought mm -hmm. and that and that we as, as community leaders or as elected leaders uh, do not understand our role, uh, I, I understand uh, the role in which uh, I was elected to. And this community made it perfectly clear uh, what those priorities uh, are. And, and that's, and that's, and I think that life, it, it uh, will have a far uh, uh, long reach effect than it would be for us to build an, uh, a, a monument, you know, where we put fur babies a uh, priority over life, where we wind up putting, building hotels in these monuments before water issues, where we wind up doing all the things that a city shouldn't be doing and ignoring the things that we are doing. And if you can't see that, then I basically, you know, there are individuals that have come to me, which I have every right to express their opinion, that they're not the ones, they're, they're, they're showing their limitations, not being able to see the big picture. Right. And as a community, we're dealing with all that at one time. Exactly. Things that have gone undone. Mispri unattended. They, their priorities have been misplaced. Yeah. Misappropriation. And and you yeah. see it all. All you got to do is just drive around your community. Every well, time you drive on a bumpy road, yeah. Well, you the thing is, is that you, you, yeah. you know, the thing is that that wasn't a priority of the city. Exactly. Every time that you, 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 you look at water and you question the quality, that means that wasn't a priority. Exactly. Uh, you know, when, when, and you see it all, you know, when the roads are not well lit. Right. When you basically see uh, where, where you see uh, where we're short in, in, in our personnel for our police mm -hmm. or you see an equipment that isn't updated. Those right. are missed. Uh, missed priorities that we should have prioritized. But what the yeah. thing is, is that we, we're too busy being everything else other than what we should be. And that is providing those fundamental services to our community to our at community. affordable price. Amen. Well, I tell you what, we're, we're coming, coming down to the wire on our time here. And again, I want to thank both of you gentlemen, because these are, these are two men that have shown up and they've been showing up for a long time and they're still showing up. So, won't you show up? Even even becoming a partner with GLC, show up. Be a part of this onward and upward movement so we can have opportunity to visit with gentlemen like this that, uh, that want to lead, want to tell us uh, a, about the things going on in our community. Be a part, show up. There's work to be done. If we're going to have the opportunity to raise our families to raise our children, be a part. The Lord bless you.